So we're going to do this example where we have 30 farmers were asked how many farm workers they hired during a typical harvest season. They have, we have our data. This is going to say to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for this data. We are going to do this by hand first uh, because if you plan to do anything statistics related for your IA, you need to know how to do this by hand. Um, excuse me. Uh, but I will show you how to do it um, in a calculator because that's what's going to be needed for tests. Okay, so start out, I made a nice little table to organize your data, especially since we're doing it by hand, we want everything nice and clean. If you're going to do something statistics based and you decide to find the mean or the standard deviation, um, I suggest you do the same thing because it makes it very presentable and it's nice and clean and it's able to check your work behind you. Okay, so X clearly represents the responses of farm workers they hire during the typical season. Now, do you think I'm going to put in all 30 responses? Making a frequency table is a lot easier, okay? And even though, yes, some farmers only hired, like there's only one farmer that hired no workers, and there was only one far farmer that hired one worker, but there are some farmers who, you know, hired the same amount of workers, is there not? So a, a frequency table actually can help us here, especially since we have to do all this extra stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and let's make our frequency table. We have a uh, one zero. Um, one person only said they hired no extra workers. And then there was only one farmer who hired one extra worker, correct? Okay. So then how many farmers hired two workers? Two. How many farmers said they hired three workers? Three. And we're going to keep going, okay? We're creating our frequency table. So we're going to have four five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Okay, I want you guys to go ahead and fill in the rest of the frequency. That's what F represents. F represents the frequency. How many hire four workers? How many hire five workers? How many hire six extra workers? Seven, eight, wait, three or two? Three and nine? <laughs> Let's see, there are, yes, there are two nines. Remember, how can you check to make sure you have all of them? Add up all the frequencies. One plus one is two, plus two is four, plus three is seven, plus six is 13, plus five is 18, plus four is 22, and then plus eight is 30. Okay? I'm going to make this last row that I have, I'm going to make that my total row. Okay? And this is going to be helpful because to calculate certain things, we are going to need certain totals. Okay? So I do have 30 there. Now, the next thing I want to do to find my mean and my standard deviation by hand is I need to go ahead and multiply my frequencies and my x values together. Okay? We did this when we talked about mean last class. And so we're going to do the same thing here. <coughs> that's, what F, <coughs> that's what fx means. We're going to multiply them together. Zero times one. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 6, 5 times 5, 6 times 4, 7 times 3, 8 times 3, and then 9 times 2, 18. Okay? Now, if you guys recall, when we're doing finding means by hand, we take the frequencies, we take the x values, we multiply them together, and then what do we need to do after we multiply them together? We divide by how many there are after we add them up, okay? So we got to add up all of these, okay? Add up all of these. Give me my total. Yes, go ahead. What's the total? 150. So, to find our mean by hand, we just have to take <clears throat> the product, <coughs> excuse me, the sum of our x values times our frequencies and then divide it by what? What are we going to do with this total? We're going to take that 150 and divide it by what? How many, how many farmers there are, right? 
So our, how about our total frequency, right? Because there's 30 farmers. So then our mean is going to be 150 divided by 30, which is what? Five. Five. Okay. So our mean number of uh, farmers that were hired during a harvest season is five. Think about it. Also, has to fall like inside of the x values, right? So it can be fifty because we don't have fifty extra farmers that were hired. Okay. So that's how you find the mean by hand. We kind of did that already last week when we were doing means by hand. Um, any questions on finding the mean? Now finding the standard deviation. The formula, and this is the form that you also would use if you were doing an IA, um, and you want to show standard deviations, show the spread of your data, um, or even if, like, say, in an IB question, they they give you the formula, and then you have to find certain pieces and plug it into the formula. Okay, the formula for standard deviation is the square root of the sum of however many you know, pieces of data you have of the x value minus the mean value squared all over n. And I do apologize, this needs to be stretched. Right there you go. That's how you find standard deviation by hand. So basically, the inside represents variance because standard deviation is the square root of variance. Okay? I equals one. Mm -hmm. So basically, all, all that represents is you're basically going to add up all of your x values minus your mean value squared, and then you're going to divide it by n. Okay? So that's what this table is for. Okay? Because what we have to do is we clearly have to subtract every x value by our mean, which we just found to be 5. Okay? So that's how we're going to first start this off. Okay? We're going to take each x value and we're going to subtract it from our mean. After that, we're going to square each x, square each uh, value that's in this particular column. Okay? So let's start here. 0 minus 5. 1 minus 5. Negative 4. Okay? 2 minus 5. And if you're like, is it going to keep going this way? Yes. Yes, it really is. Because your number's only increasing by 1. Okay? So you'll have 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. 5 minus 5, which is 0. 6 minus 5, which is 1. 7 minus 5, which is 2. 8 minus 5, which is 3. 9 minus 5, which is 4. Then you have to take every single one of those values, and then you have to square it. Square those values. So we square the values. What do we get? 25, 16, 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, 9, 16. So the last thing we have to do, and we do have to do this, is we have to take this column that we just did, where we took the x values, subtracted them from the mean, and squared it. We have to multiply it by the frequency. Why do we have to multiply it by the frequency? Re remember, this right here, this x minus mean part, that was only for one, like one uh, of each kind, right? So even though there's only one farmer that hired zero extra workers for harvest season, you still have to multiply that by 1. This right here, you multiply by 16, okay? But there were two farmers that hired two extra people. So this, you know, x minus mean squared only counted for one of those people. We have to count it for the other person. So instead of doing it for all 30 people, like instead of doing this whole process for 30 pieces of data, we kind of shorthanded it by using frequencies instead. So you have to multiply this whole column by the frequencies to account for that there are three people that hired three extra workers, that there are six people who hired four extra workers, okay? So we're going to multiply each one of these values 
by our frequency. 25 times 5 is 25. That was easy. 16 times 1? 16. We're going to multiply 9 by 2. 4 by 3. 12. Again, we are multiplying our frequencies by the column we just did. Okay, our frequencies are right here. We're going to multiply 1 by 6. 0 by 5, 1 by 4, 3 by 4, 9 by 3, and 16 times 2, 32. Now, this is what we need to add up. This column right here is going to represent the numerator of to find our standard deviation, okay? So... I'll let you use your calculators here because when we divide it by n and take the square root, it's not going to be a, a number that we know the, the square root of. Okay? So let's add up all the green column. And again, that's going to represent the numerator of our standard deviation. What is your total? 152. 152. So that's our total. That is the sum of all the x minus mu, uh, mean squares, and that's going to be our numerator and our standard deviation. Now we have to divide by n. What do you think n is? Say again. It is 30. It is the number of pieces of data that we have. So our standard deviation is going to be the square root of 152 divided by 30, which is... Probably not a, a terminating decimal. Where is it? It's 2.25. 2.25? Does it stop? No. So that's three significant figures. So then there are answers. There's our mean and our standard deviation by hand.